Hi, everybody. Todd here, and welcome back to Ask DRTK. I hope you're having a great day. I get a lot of questions about how to connect gear up, and in particular, how to connect a mic pre or a channel strip up to an audio interface. In fact, just the other day, I had a question about whether to use a quarter-inch output or XLR output from an ART voice channel, which is a channel strip up to an audio interface. And again, since I get this question a lot, I thought it'd be a useful video to make. So let's take a look at the options. So I have two audio interfaces here. I've got a Focusrite Scarlett. This is a 4i4 model. And then I've got a Universal Audio Apollo Twin. And I brought a Focusrite ISA1 microphone preamp here. So kind of the basic idea of what we're looking to set up. I also have a few cables here. I have a standard XLR cable. And so that's going to be three pin end to end. And then I also have a TRS cable. This is also three conductors through the cable and allows us to make balanced connections. Both of these formats do that. That's really good and that it helps minimize noise across cable runs. Now I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail on that today, but suffice to say that's the preferred method. TS cables or two conductor cables can allow additional noise to creep in and really aren't ideal for this application. Most audio interfaces and preamps are gonna support a balanced connection. So that's the way to go. Now there are also specialty cables like this XLR to TRS cable. That can be really useful when we have limited connectivity on either the interface or the preamp and we want to use a cable. On the other hand, we can also use an adapter. So if we have a standard XLR cable, we can actually use an adapter and now I have XLR to TRS and there's a variety of options for that. So a few different ways we can go there. Now I'll start by talking about the advantages and disadvantages of these formats. We'll use the back of the of Focusrite ISA-1 just to help with that. Now one of the advantages of an XLR cable is the ability to lock in place. So whether it's you know a female version or a male version, we can go ahead and lock them in. They'll click in and they won't pull out. And that is something that is very useful. Now, the, it depends a little bit on what you have for connectors. Like for example, on the back of this Universal Audio Twin, you know, I can plug an XLR cable in here, but it doesn't have a locking mechanism. It can still just pull out. So it depends a little bit on what you have for an actual interface. Same is true for the Scarlett here. Now the TRS cable kind of has the same thing. This particular preamp does not have an, an output or a main output that's TRS, but I'll just use a plug for example. And so you can plug that in, it's pretty simple, but again, it can get pulled out fairly easily. And that's not ideal. Same thing applies with the combo jacks. We plug them in and that's great, but it could just come and get pulled out. So there's some advantages to TRS depending on the jacks we have on our devices. Now, the issue is though, is that if we have a preamp like this, where we have an output that is only XLR. We can go ahead and do that. So I've got my output here. I can go ahead and plug that directly in here to XLR. Now the issue is, is that this is really a microphone connection on the back here. It can be used and it will take the signal from the preamp. It's gonna pass everything through the preamp inside the interface as well. This particular preamp in the Apollo doesn't allow you to pass a line level signal through and bypass the internal preamp. And it actually doesn't matter whether I'm using XLR or the TRS on the combo jack, this is gonna put everything through its internal preamp. So that's just something to be aware of here. But a lot of times you'd wanna use a TRS connection into this because phantom power is not sent out through TRS. And so you have kind of that safety factor. If I have my preamp, my mic pre, plugged into this Apollo and I turn on phantom power, I'm gonna send phantom power back into this mic preamp, which could cause damage. So it's not really the ideal way to do it. So, you know, if again, if all I had was this XLR cable, I might go ahead and just get an adapter for it so that I could plug this in to TRS and not have to worry about that. So again, here it's not so much about am I bypassing preamps or not, it's about safety for why I would do that. Now, the same thing is the case here on the Focusrite in that if you have one that just has the combo jacks, plugging in is going to give you an, an input signal that goes through the preamp. And you'll see that generally when you adjust the gain control, it's going to adjust the level. So you can, it's handy to use for trim in some ways, but again, you're not bypassing the preamps. But some interfaces have dedicated line inputs. And so the nice thing there is if I plug into a line input here, I'm not going through the Scarlett's preamp. I'm using only the Focusrite ISA-1 preamp I'm going directly to line in here, which will go to the converters. So that's an advantage of having these separate connections. This can also be found on some interfaces that have auto switching. 
So looking at the Personas Quantum, this is an example of an interface with auto sensing inputs. And you see right now it's showing me on channel one with a line level input. So that's this input. As soon as I connect a microphone up with XLR, you see it switches over to gain mode through the preamp. And so now I can adjust the gain and get whatever signal I want. I've just got an SM57 connected up to this cable. But as soon as I disconnect it, it's gonna switch back to line mode. Whereas when I plug in a TRS jack, it's gonna stay on line mode. And, and that's the idea here is it automatically senses one to the other. Whenever there's an XLR, it's gonna go in preamp mode. In TRS mode, it's line mode, which is directly to the converter. So nice to have. Above it, we've got the Scarlett 18i20. This interface just puts everything through the preamp. So when I plug in an XLR cable and I go ahead and turn the signal up, of course, I'm gonna to start to get signal here. When I go ahead and I plug in a TRS cable, it's gonna also go through the preamp I don't have anything connected up to it here, but you'll see that as I turn the preamp up here, if I touch the end, I'm going to get more signal. And if I turn it down, it's going to be less signal. So that just shows you that the preamp is still there. So a little different behavior from these two different interfaces. And overall, there are two most important considerations for connecting your mic pre up to your audio interface. The first one is, is there a chance for phantom power to be sent from your audio interface back to your mic pre? That's going to be the case if you're using a standard XLR cable. And so you don't want to have that. It's going to cause issues. It can damage the mic pre. The way you get around that is if you need to come with XLR out of your microphone preamp, you can do that, but just go back to TRS on your audio interface. You can either do that with a specialized cable like I have here, or you can get an adapter if you have regular XLR cables around your studio. So that's the first thing to consider. Second thing is, does your audio interface pass line level signals directly to the converter or does everything go through the microphone preamps? And it's not always a question of cost. I mean, I started out with a, a Scarlett and an Apollo, two very different price points, but neither would pass signal through without going through the built-in preamp. In the case of the Scarlett, it had line inputs that did allow me to do that, but the combo jacks did not. And so again, if you have an audio interface that passes the signal through the preamps, just know that's going to add some coloration to the signal. Not much you can do about that. Some will have like the quantum where it's going to be auto switching and give you the opportunity to either go through the preamp or go in directly to line. Line is generally preferable bypassing the internal preamps whenever you're going to use a channel strip or an outboard mic preamp. And of course, this is meant to be a general guide with the most common connections always check your manual to find out what's really going to happen with your audio interface and if there's any other considerations you need to have in mind before making those connections as always i appreciate you joining me hope you have a great week and i'll see you next time